What's going on guys, it's Jake here, and in this video I'll be talking about the Acorns app because I myself have been using it for about nine months or so. I started using it, or at least got money into it in about November of 2018, and when I'm making this video, it's actually halfway through September of 2019. So I'll be talking a little bit about Acorns, what I think about it, if I like it or not, if you know I want to continue using it, the good things, the bad things, and maybe perhaps you can you know figure out a little bit about it yourself. And also, if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. I talk about investing, the stock market, market, personal finance, entrepreneurship, things like that. So if you're just in that kind of stuff and you're not yet subscribed, definitely consider joining in on the community. But other than that, getting into it, so Acorns app, if you're kind of more unfamiliar with what they are and you really have no idea what they do or anything like that, so basically they're an investment platform that you can use. They're really easy to use. They're actually pretty cheap to use. And with this, you don't actually have to do a whole lot of work. Acorns does all the work for you. So with Acorns, you deposit money into it and you get five portfolio choices from kind of not very risky at all, more towards a conservative type. And then a little bit more risky towards uh, the, I guess, less conservative side, or I forget what they actually name it, but I'll show that in a couple of minutes or so. But either way, you put the money in, Acorns does all the investing and all that for you, and it's more for a long-term investing strategy. It's not necessarily for someone looking for trading because you can't really do any trading with it or anything like that. It's for people who are trying to save up for the long run, whether it be retirement or maybe just a few years, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And one super awesome feature that Acorns have that they advertise about that I think a lot of people like is that you and hook it up with your credit or debit card and whenever you make a purchase it kind of rounds up and takes that spare change and puts it into your acorn portfolio to save and invest for you so it's really an app that has some pretty cool features that allows you to invest in the stock market and just have some investments that are going to grow over time without having to do a whole lot of work and honestly, I personally like it and I think it's a pretty solid app, but there are some things that it can improve. But anyways, first I'm gonna show you, pop up the app on the side over here somewhere and kind of show you how my Acorns is actually going. So the Acorns app should be up somewhere over here. And if I go to my portfolio, which goes to the core performance down here, and if I go to performance details, we show you how well and how much my portfolio has actually been growing. So as you can see, I have $68 in my account right now. And this like kind of major jump right here and drop was just for me simply getting money from, I think it was just from referrals and then withdrawing that money. But either way, uh, if you look at how it did right here, overall, I'm up 4.49%. And then if we go to the one year chart, if it loads, um, I start started on November 29th or like 28th or so, somewhere around there. And as you can see, it goes up all the way today to September 16th, and I've still done 4.49% in the past year because it hasn't quite been a year yet. Then if we go down to the six months mark, uh, I'm up 3.45%, and then one month up 2.26%, and then one day, actually, I'm just down today, but that really doesn't matter too much. But anyways, I mean, overall, uh, looking at that and comparing it to just the general market overall, it's really not bad. And then when you actually look at what type of investments I'm invested in, which I'll look at in a second, it kind of overall makes sense and I think is actually pretty decent. So if we scroll over here, I'm gonna go to, I guess the percentage amount because that'd probably be better off. So in this portfolio right here, I chose basically the second highest or second riskiest portfolio. It's, uh, I can't remember the actual name of it off the top of my head. And I don't know if it says right here, but let's see if it says anywhere down here. What is this portfolio? I think it, okay, if we go to view settings, it should say right here. All right, yeah, so I'm the moderately aggressive portfolio. So basically I have 38% of my portfolio in large company stocks, 14 in small company stocks, four in emerging market stocks, eight in real estate stocks, 10 in government bonds, and 10 in corporate bonds. So why I chose this portfolio out of the other choices, which is aggressive, moderate, moderately conservative, and conservative, I basically chose this one because when we go to the aggressive side, I didn't like that one because they focus on things like international large company stocks, real estate, real estate stocks, and emerging market stocks. And honestly, those just aren't things I would want to invest in. I don't think it's necessarily like super risky to invest in stuff like that, but it's just not part of my investing strategy and something I would want to invest in. Then if we go to the moderately aggressive, it does have 20% in the portfolio in bonds, which I'm not a huge fan on of. I would probably rather that 20% get added into the large company stocks, but either way, I think this is the best out of the five. But again, this was my opinion. You could choose whatever one you want based on your investing strategy. But anyways, if we go back to my portfolio over here, 
And we go to these performance details and go to the percentages. As you can see, the percentages are pretty much spot on to what they were and what they're supposed to be. So large companies, 37, almost 38. Small companies, almost 14. Emerging stocks, almost four. Real estates, eight. Government bonds, almost 10. Corporate bonds, almost 10. And then international large stocks, almost 16. And then shares don't really matter too much because I really don't own that much or have that much in my portfolio. But anyways, talking about Acorns overall, so I really do think it is good for what it does. But just to be very clear, if you're going to use Acorns, this is for a long-term investing strategy. This is not for anything like short-term or anything like that, like trying to day trade or do even any some sort of swing trading. That will not work on the Acorns app. It is definitely, definitely for people who are looking to save for like retirement or just down the stretch. It is not for people looking to join in the or to invest in the short term. So overall, comparing Acorns to some other like brokerages that are free to use are very cheap. Acorns is free if you're a college student for like a certain period of time. I think it's like six months or something like that then beyond that it's a dollar per month and then it actually charges a very small percent of portfolios over five thousand dollars so looking at what they do and how much they charge you, I actually do think it is relatively fair. Now I personally use Robinhood and M1 Finance, which are totally free to use, and that's where the majority of my money is in the Robinhood app, and those charge you absolutely no fees at all, not even a dollar a month. But Looking at what this does for you, I actually don't think that's that bad of a price because there's probably people out there and other apps and brokerages that I actually know of out there that charge you way, way more to do what they're doing, not even at such a good level. So with Acorns, it really is super easy to use the app overall. Um, it's not, I really don't think it's complicated at all, even for someone who's a beginner who's never invested or never used anything like this before. It has the automatic deposit feature, which I think is uh, like, that's kind of what attracted me to it more than like what the actual app does or what they actually invest and stuff like that because when you're looking at something like acorns and you're trying to or just trying to get a savings account going or an investment portfolio going one of the biggest things that people always forget about that is absolutely key to growing your portfolio regardless of what it is is depositing money that's really is one of the biggest things a lot of people look at their portfolio day one and you know let's say it's a thousand dollars or something like that they look at it day one and then go, you know, I want to grow this portfolio to $10,000 just by capital gains. It's probably not very realistic. You're probably only going to grow it that much through capital gains, through dividend yields, and by depositing money into that portfolio. So that really is a crucial feature that I have yet to see any other brokerages or apps have out there. I know Robinhood doesn't have it. M1 Finance doesn't have it. They do have like automatic deposits or where you can basically schedule your deposits throughout the month or the week or whatever. But I have yet to see a, any brokerage or any app or anything like that have a feature like acorns which is really top notch honestly i really do like that feature a lot but one thing i don't like that much and i think could use some adjustments is their investment categories so like i was showing before they have five categories it goes from conservative to aggressive i have one that's moderately aggressive so it's kind of in the upper middle part of it and it's not quite in the middle it's a it's, i guess what they would call aggressive not necessarily what i would call aggressive but either way so they have five categories to invest in and i get why they do have that because i think their whole um, idea around it is to make it really simple make it super easy to use but i think they could have more categories and give you a little bit more leeway on what you specifically want to invest in maybe perhaps by allowing you to individually change those percentages or something along the lines of that either allow you to actually change those percentages or to allow you to like create more portfolios that you could invest in or just simply have them give you more portfolios to invest in because i don't necessarily like not any of these five portfolios are one i invest in like in my Robinhood portfolio or in my m1 finance portfolio and to be quite honest i think they could have done a little bit better and maybe could have done a little bit better with naming because i personally think if you're looking to long term you know do it be a long-term investor never touch that portfolio again I actually made a video last week about it so definitely check that out but anyways if you're looking to make a portfolio where you never want to touch again and you want to invest in the long term I think you can just simply get that done and get pretty good returns by investing in really large ETFs that follow indexes or you know do something along the lines of that some of them like Vanguard S&P 500 ETF Vanguard total world ETF some of the Vanguard dividend yielding ETFs I mean some of those like those you could basically do what acorns is trying to get you to do but get better returns but of course that's just my opinion but 
But anyways, guys, that's really it for this video. So definitely let me know in the comment section if you use Acorn as an app or if you like them. I do a lot. And also, if you're interested in downloading Acorn's app, definitely, definitely uh, use someone's referral link. I have a referral link in the description. So when you sign up, you get five bucks when you fund your account. But regardless of if you use mine or not, if you actually do plan up signing up, I would definitely use the link because that is a free five dollars. Uh, but either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said before, if you did, definitely consider su subscribing. I talk about investing, the stock market, personal finance, entrepreneurship, things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely consider joining in on the community. And also, if you enjoyed the video, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm if you leave a like. And even if you didn't like the video, you thought it was terrible, feel free to hit the dislike button because that supposedly helps with the algorithm as well. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching.